Hi, welcome to my channel and this is episode 332 of our Grave Tour of the Filo series. In this episode, we return to Manila North Cemetery in search of notable individuals like our heroes, famous celebrities, musicians, politicians, sportsmen and businessmen interred in this part of Metro Manila. Come, join us to remember, celebrate the life, and visit the final resting place of a businessman and amateur anthropologist who claimed to have discovered the Stone Age tribe in the early 1970s. Located at the southern side of the cemetery, few meters from Sacred Heart Monument, is the Elizalde Mausoleum, which is the final resting place of businessman Manda Elizalde. Manuel Cadwalader Elizalde Jr., or better known as Manda Elizalde, was born on the 8th November 1936. He was a businessman and best remembered during 1971 in his claim to have discovered a Stone Age tribe called the Sadai in the jungle of South Cotabato. Elizalde was a Harvard educated businessman, was appointed by then President Marcos as presidential assistant on national minorities. In June 1971, Elizalde claimed to have discovered a Stone Age tribe called Tasadais in the jungle of South Cotabato. In November of the same year, Elizalde ran for senator under Nationalist Party but failed to get enough votes for a Senate seat, landing on the ninth place. The Tasadai tribe discovery caught the attention of the whole world where many foreign anthropologists, journalists, and prehistoric experts traveled to Mindanao to study the tribe's way of life and its subsequent discovery. The rumors about the Tasadai hoax grow, and in 1974, Elizalde blocked any further visits by experts and social scientists to Tasadai habitat. The area remained closed until 1986 when Marcos was deposed from power. Somewhere in a remote corner of the world, a lost tribe, untouched by time, lives in the last tiny corner of Eden left on Earth. Imagine the excitement when 20 years ago, that tribe was discovered. The Tasadai, living the life of Stone Age cavemen, unaware that there were any other human beings on the planet. In the early 1970s, loggers were cutting down the rainforest there were rumors of a strange group of forest dwellers living right in the logger's path. And President Ferdinand Marcos's special assistant for national minorities, Manda Elizalde, had gone to investigate. Elizalde, one of the wealthiest young men in the Philippines, met the group first in June 1971. By 1972, he was inviting the world in to see what he had found. touched me most. They never realized that we were helping them in any way. They didn't know there was a country. They didn't know there was a sea. They didn't know that their land had to be protected. Uh, the simplest things that we had with our group, for instance, like rice, they did not even know uh, what it was or even have a name for it. This uh, brought to a uh, a certain amount of uh, uh, suspicion at first and then concern for them that we should advise the scientific world that there are these people who seem to be very different. The Tasadai became instant celebrities. National Geographic magazine devoted 32 pages to the Stone Age men of Mindanao. One month later, NBC News correspondent Jack Reynolds introduced the tribe to a national television audience. In August of 1972, the Tasadai were visited by Douglas Yen, a world-renowned ethnobotanist. The Tasadai weren't originally cavemen at all, it seemed. Further details might come from the anthropologists. And Elizalde, protective of the tribe, put science second. He placed limits on access to the Tasadai. 
and even tried to forbid certain questions that he thought touched on sensitive issues. In 1986, ABC News made a follow-up story about the earlier Tassadai hoax and revealed a conspiracy between the Tassadai and El Salte. As the story went, sometime back in the mid-1960s, a local trapper named Dothal on the left ran across the Tassadai and became their cultural benefactor. Dothal reportedly took the information to this man, Manuel Elizalde Jr., Monda for short, San Marco's tribal pipe man. This Harvard-educated heir of the largest industrial conglomerates was entrusted with the protection of the many Philippine hill tribes of the presidential assistant for national minorities called Panamine. What we learned from these men over the next few days was not the Garden of Eden story we'd been regaled with over the years. It was a story they said which was choreographed by Manda Elizalde. A tragic tale of deception, coercion, isolation, and ultimately abandonment. In 1983, Elizalde forced to leave the Philippines and settled in a plantation in Costa Rica. He returned to the Philippines in 1988 to help manage the family business interests. He died on the 3rd May 1997, upon this close cause, he was 61. In the next episode, we will post the video of the continuation of our visit here at Manila North Cemetery and living in Amagayani in Taguig. Later in this channel, we will also post more Grade 2 videos including Loyola Memorial Park in Paranaque and in Marikina. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe if you like my channel. See you in our next Grade 2 of the famous episodes.